Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for lots of interesting in my research and also thanks for this like, very nice introduction and uh, also thanks for your attention. And this research is about the resilience and mortality of Chinese civilization in Chinese societies, primarily in China and also Hong Kong. Chinese civilization is a remote story for a rich cultural legacy, but also a controversial one. In mainland China, at the beginning of the 20th century, in the last 30 years, its related philosophical concepts have been celebrated as part of national studies, Guoxue, by the Chinese Community Party, but the military parties were attacked as superstition. After experiencing a brutal attempt to eradicate related during the Cultural Revolution, Chinese division has survived and has derived from the late 1970s to our knowledge. This research aims to explore the mortality and resilience of Chinese division by focusing on knowledge transmission. Since Chinese division has been attacked by civilization and the specialists of this knowledge have been constantly adopting adopting to it to supply in a faster moving society. In the current context, as the general public shows a strong interest in dignitary consultation, services, and diviners attempts to continue the circulation of the nation in the market, and the state has ambiguous attitudes toward division practices and the dignitary related philosophical concepts and works. These factors contribute to the transformation. The, these factors contribute to the transformation of knowledge transmission, the teaching and learning of Chinese education and its related parts, such as EZ and other cardinal works. So the teaching and learning of EZ and division practices serve as a drive to examine the change and the continuity of Chinese education. So personally, this research will follow the learner's perspectives to examine why ordinary Chinese feel the need to learn Chinese civilization in contemporary times. What are their motivations and what process does learning division actually involve? Furthermore, why do motivations for learning beyond personal biographies tell us about the beauty and transformation of Chinese culture? How can the connection between individuals, teenager knowledge, and the larger social cultural context be better studied? Secondly, this research intends to explore how knowledge and practice are structured, ordered, and controlled, utilizing two theoretical concepts, community of practice, and the secrecy. This research seeks to answer the questions. How can the community of practice theory help to understand the teaching and learning of easy knowledge and division practices? How is it the knowledge construct and maintained within the community? How are these secret knowledge and practice translated in contemporary settings? How do practitioners teach education and knowledge and at what level to their followers in the community? Thirdly, this research will examine how changing historical and political contexts alter and contribute to the separation of deleterious practices and the philosophical class based on them. So following the idea that scholars should notice how practitioners put their expertise into practice, my research aims to avoid discussing eating and deleterious terms decontextualized from their historical foundation and especially from their application in social practice. The goal is to focus not only on words and the concepts, but on actions and their explanation in empirical practices. Moreover, I will follow the method of participant observation, not approaching these terms in terms of Western anthropological categories, but immersing myself in them as an insider and taking readers into a world where they can follow the flow of teaching, respect the unsigned and experience the practice of the nation as a creative art. In the juxtaposition of psychological analysis and ethnographic accounts, this research will conduct a 10-month period of fieldwork, during which the researcher were learning its integration with two groups of students and two professional diviners in Shenzhen, 
a city in, located in the south of China and Hong Kong. Data will be collected from the historical carbon works, archaeology findings, academic works, and etc. And then I will talk about the research compass of this project. In the post-cultural revolution period, the denouncement of the nation continued in mainland China. The Chinese Communist Party classifies five religions as orthodoxy and officially permits their practice in the country. Their Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, Catholicism, and Protestant Christianity. Although never explicitly defined the rest of the traditional beliefs and the traditions which had any potential to be incompatible with rationality, science, and the material logic of Marxism Leninism were labeled as pseudo superstition, Feng Xian Yi Xin. Chinese nation was targeted as superstition, and this ideology transmitted through the educational system, state mouthpiece, mass media, and campaign against the developers. But in reality, actually, the division pervades various aspects of Chinese life and culture. And according to the research conducted by a team of economists in 2021, division consultation and related services created markets worth 500 million. So we can see this astronomical figure reveals the great popularity of Chinese division in mainland China. A circumstance, a circumstance that is hard to concern through local newspaper or TV programs. And divination practice has permeated various aspects and social strata. So, for example, before capital gas markets, it is common and tacit to consult a professional diviner, asking if they are suitable for each other or not. A newborn baby is named by a professional diviner based on his or her horoscope. Leading entrepreneurs consult professional designers for advice about the design of their businesses or factories to achieve good function. And government officials tend to secretly establish close ties with practitioners. They consider trustworthy and consult on issues such as when, how, and in what ways they can be promoted, how to manage difficult personal relationships in the workplace and what possible political risks exist in the future. Prestigious business people explicitly connected with professional developers by appointing them to ICC advisors, and they consult them not only for financial investment in decision making, but also use them as a channel to expand their social network, which is called Guan Xi Chinese. And young people seek relief from initial services in the highly competitive society by asking values about career prospects and the possibility paths to prosperity. And uh, you must notice like, that the contribution to the state sanctioned markets and the great popularity of division in realities raises the following questions. How did Chinese division survive in contemporary times? And how to explain the mortality of division in the communist of China despite official condemnation? And the Chinese nation must transfer to supply under the ban on its practice related to superstition. The transmission of the nation is special in this complex. The government's strongly reforms public attitudes toward the nation have directly reshaped the officially sanctioned knowledge to meet the state approved standards. Obfuscating the living subject is the first step to become visible in the markets. Practitioners repackage divination techniques and related concepts, hiding them under the cover of the translation of traditional Chinese knowledge. This obscure the original purpose of learning divination and shifted the focus towards disseminating Chinese cosmology and philosophical concepts. And the students obtain the tacit acceptance that they are delving into traditional Chinese culture with only a secondary emphasis. Um, actual division techniques. So, altering from traditional divinatory consultations between designers and clients to the teaching and learning of Chinese division is a strategy to navigate state regulations and gain market visibility. In recent years, people from various social backgrounds have spent in years in learning easy based and easy to run division techniques. Although without the intention of becoming professional developers. So, in the markets, practitioners provided both short term and long term 
delivery policies. And before 2020, there were many advertisements for divination courses on websites. And the tuition fees ranged from thousands to hundreds of thousands of RMB, equivalent to about 100 to 20,000 euro. And this situation has changed greatly in recent years. So, and then I'm going to talk about what is the context and the significance of this research. So as Benson notes, the 21st century is an area that remains widely under-researched, largely because it demands dedicated infographic research by requires deep engagement with communities involved. In the past, studies of divination have been conducted primarily by outsiders, where insiders are able to explore communities that can be quite private and hidden from outsiders. Because of the sensitivity nature of Chinese divination in politics and the privacy concerns associated with practitioners and their students or, or clients, in that anthropological research on diviners and the students or customers require that researchers establish strong relationships, not only with the practitioners, but also with their customers or students to secure permission to conduct the research. And the most anthropological research of Chinese deviation focuses on diviners or the social and cultural dimension of deviatory practices. And scholars hardly pay attention to learners, but a focus on the diviner alone misses the fundamentally social nature of deviation. It overlooks the, the inherent value which comes with deviation and how to explain why in contemporary China large numbers of people spend years in learning divination. And as Richard Smith notes, although the extensive vocabulary of Chinese divination has led to an extraordinarily fine distinction between the various techniques and the processes, most academic words will nevertheless limit themselves to only one or two major divination techniques. So in this case, most of the cultural works in Chinese divination focuses on the sixth land prediction, which is called Liu Gao, and some of them related to Si Chu, which both of them I will talk about later. And actually the complex divisional systems and their internal tasks may discourage novices at the beginning. And this class, the eating or classic of change, diverse in its origin, and which is considered as unsystematic and subject to radically different readings and understandings. These unique digital systems, which is often practiced, others lack ample room for interpretation. Most importantly, learning in integration requires a long period of, of apprenticeship. And the third point is the segregation between historians and anthropologists. The changing historical and political concepts altered and contribute to the separation of, of divisory practices and the philosophical tasks based on them, both historians and anthropologists have rec recorded in detail how easy based divination was given the label superstition and then transformed into state sanctioned knowledge. Against this backdrop, the entire package of easy knowledge system and its divinatory system was separated. This separation severe the divinatory system and its deep-rooted connections with all layers of the Chinese knowledge system. And the colonists often have little experience in acquiring the forage of Chinese division systems and the Chinese culture into all the Western, limited themselves to the field, consequently leads them to create critique practitioners and division techniques based solely on interpretation of individual cases involving strict diviners. Historians really have prolonged experience with leading social practices and thus underestimate the profound potential of demographic data in analyzing classic cultural knowledge. This research suggests that the use of both anthropological methods as an historical material will further our understanding of Chinese nation in the context of contemporary settings. And this project will be the first to focus on the learner's perspectives when examining Chinese division, with the aim of establishing a new trajectory for the division research. This study will delve into the personalities of students to uncover the broader socio-cultural context surrounding division 
and my personal, and apart from my wrongs, I am a practitioner and an academic. Gives me the great privilege position as an insider. And the insider, as an insider, I, I definitely have the shared knowledge with a group of people. And I will have the advantage of the easier access to the investigated phenomena, which is the basis for the uniqueness of this research. And my new country and cultural background and expertise in various implementations enable me to describe and interpret the kinds of the data from the field from a particular lens. And now I'm going to show the general overview of this project. So in the chapter two is a learner's perspective. I will provide quantitative data about learners, and I'm going to show who are they, what are their professional backgrounds, their genders, why do they come, where do they come from, why do they want to learn divination, what are their life stories, and what made them decide to learn divination. And on the chapter three, change and continuity, modernizing Chinese divination, and chapter four, the curriculum, mainly focuses on the teaching content. In contemporary society, what kinds of factors stimulate practitioners to reform, recombine, and reinterpret divinatory knowledge to reach a mass audience? What has changed? How do practitioners modernize their ancient crafts? These two chapters will follow the flow of teaching, revealing the detailed explanation of the mechanism of 2 d based divination, Mei Hua Yishu, and Zilan Prediction, Liu Yao. The two EDT wide integration, Xinan Duzia and Si Zhu. And the chapter five is called Privacy and Secrecy in the Context of Divination. This chapter is about the social learning of divination. This research forms like the social learning associated with Guan Xi, which is called Social Relationship and Networking, is an implicit part of the curriculum. The teaching and learning continues outside of the classroom not just exists between teacher and students, but also happens between learners themselves, between senior learners and novices. The virtual learning between the teacher and students and the horizontal transmission between senior students to new students will provide rich infographic material to examine the application of the theory of communism, the, of the theory of communist of practice and the theory of secrecy. In the context of Chinese civilization in contemporary China, this, uh, the related research questions are how can the community of practice theory help understand the teaching and learning of its knowledge and the division practices? How is sacred knowledge construct and maintained within the easy society? And the chapter five is called to be invisible is to be forgotten. This chapter is about the narrative, narratives of an insider. How to become an insider in the Chinese divinatory community, how to conduct the divinatory related research in mainland China, how to approach diviners and their clients or students, what is the struggle to be an insider, as an insider, how to professionally play the game of involvement and detachment in doing field work and writing and cultural work. And then I'm going to talk about the theoretical foundation of this project. So, given the situation of the designer in crisis in inland China, some degree of secrecy is inevitable. Divination has always been characterized by carrying both subversive and the mystical undercourse. However, given the increasingly threatening repression in the current political situation, secrecy is not only an attractive element to appeal to an audience, but also a prerequisite to meeting a safe space for teaching. And Chosen defines the secret in religion as a three different types mystery, asceticism, and social secrecy. Mystery refers to knowledge that is inaccessible and unknowable to us, which supposedly comes from the divine and uh, therefore can only be acquired through divine revelation. As terrific secrets refer to the hidden meaning of something behind its appearance. And so that that merely hearing or reading about it would lead to a flow of understanding. Therefore, its meaning can only be accessible to those who have been instructed in their proper interpretation. Although Chinese tradition is not considered an explicit religious practices, 
neither by the state nor by most of practitioners. These nuanced distinctions are useful to this inquiry. In the current context, secrecy plays an important role in translation. Division practices come asterisk of asterical secrecy, which means like understanding is transmitted through practice slash exper experiential learning and social secrecy, which was applied to them, restricted by practitioners. These are the strict rules by which new learners are tested, closely scrutinizing their intentions and expectations for learning integration. To become familiar with deep knowledge and division practices means to acquire deep knowledge by memorizing the experience, Xinyan, of the Asians the in the task and combining it with personal experience in division practices. To gain the intelligence of easy knowledge and division practices, one must immerse oneself in learning the verses and practice the techniques in daily life. Technical terminology and special skills may be false, but at any rate, they can draw a line to lay person and practitioners. Chosen also state that knowledge can be hidden by four ways by relying on oral transmission rather than written words. During this, through this stimulation, whereby something may be present and visible, but not explicit, which is protected by lies, misleading, disguise, deception, silence, or simply not talking about knowledge, and obfuscation by making things appear more complex than they really are. And secrecy can be seen as an effective way to establish authority and gain control. In the discussion of Shin Buddhism in Japan, Johnson believed that secrecy is a wide supplied means of establishing social power and structuring religious organizations. The social function of secrecy is hardly discussed among the anthropology of Chinese division in contemporary China. Much more needs to be learned about what happened to these eating communities in contemporary periods. When the divinatory knowledge and practice outside the ministry also had to be dissembled and concealed to escape state persecution, this research were investing, investigate the maintenance and the construction of secret knowledge within the eating community. And the second theory I'm going to use in my project is called the community of practice. This theory will be used as a framework to examine how teaching and learning was entangled with privacy and the secrecy. Winter states the social nature of learning and despite community of practice as an entity bounded by three interrelated dimensions, mutual engagement, joint enterprise, and a shared repertoire. Mutual engagement represents the ways members engage ways and respond to each other's actions and establish relationship, relationships based on this engagement. Joint enterprise is a process in which people are engaged and working together toward a common goal. Finally, shared repertoire refers to the common resources and, and drivers that members use to na na navigate meaning and facilitate learning within the group. Based on my years of experience in learning and teaching Chinese innovation with groups of learners in the eating community, in the context of contemporary China, I extended the meeting secrecy by the first point in the concept of community of practice. I defined meeting secrecy as a stage in which people had the obligation in retaining and consulting each other's private information, which revealed through deliberate practice. Deep knowledge and division practices are transmitted and learned in, deep, in three different stages. In the first stage, practitioners teach standardized knowledge to avoid criticism, criticism and receive by superstition. Standardized, standardized knowledge refers to the concept and historical private works that have officially recognized by the community party, such as Chinese cosmology, the five elements, yin and yang. Etc. etc. Secondly, members must integrate into the community by building strong relationships with other members and practitioners. Notably, trust must be developed during a set period of time, and in the next year framework, our mainly focus on the transmission of the knowledge and practice 
marked on day three interrelated dimensions of mutual engagement, joint enterprise, and shared capital. And I will also provide more information and to explain why meeting secrecy should be added in community of practice in the context of contemporary China. And finally, practitioners began to transmit the secret knowledge, known as the mechanism of divination, shu shu, and especially the an an analysis of specific hexagrams of varied levels. And uh, in this research, secret knowledge is roughly defined as divination knowledge that is distinct, distinct from easy or other major classic works and has not reviewed in details in books and videos available to the public. Community of practice is an evolving concept, the use of this concept to analyze the transmission of traditional Chinese practice and knowledge is relatively new and limited. In the next year, I plan to contact few work in mainland, Hong, mainland China and Hong Kong to examine how the teaching and learning of digital knowledge and practice might only three dimensions how does one become a key member of the community and learn secret knowledge? Does the concept of an insider trajectory within the community of practice help us understand what is happening? And then I'm going to share some content from my chapter three, the curriculum. In, in the following, I will show the mechanism of, of three easy intimidation, which are the main components of the curriculum of the easy community, which I researched. Through the explanations of layers of project knowledge, I aim to provide examples of what is standardized knowledge and secret knowledge in the transmission of digital practices and knowledge in contemporary China. Why knowledge needs to be structured in this way? And what kind of participation in this easy community is entitled to learn secret knowledge from the practitioner? And uh, in the following, this research will show data that I have already collected from 2013 to 2018 in one easy community in Shenzhen. This community was led by a professional designer, Teacher Li, who has specialized in various eating nations and has more than a decade of teaching experience. This, the easy community is located in a modern office spanning around 500 square meters, suited in a high-end com commercial office, office building in Shenzhen. The community was organized by teacher Li and consists with around like 50, 50 learners aged between 25 and 65 years old. Learners in the community come from diverse social backgrounds. Most of them are businessmen, top managers, university students, government officials, and professionals. And, and Professors, I just show some pictures in here, which I took like uh, four years ago in Shenzhen, his office. And uh, actually, this is this is his uh, personal study room. So I was lucky to to stay there in the past few years and drinking tea with him and with friends slash students. So based on my past experience in teaching Chinese division, I noticed that Chinese digital systems are newly constructed by obscure terminologies. If one sentence contains more than three unfamiliar terms, it can easily confuse the students. So in the following, I will avoid using deleterious terms when explaining the mechanism of the three easy deletion, three easy deletions. And uh, then I will gradually introduce more complicated terms and concept to show the layers of knowledge that exist within the Chinese simulation system. The practical knowledge was acquired from 2013 to 2018 when I started with teacher Lee and his students in this easy community, and also from academic analysis of archaeological findings, historical works, ancient and modern digital works. And uh, Sixth-line prediction. Six prediction is the most popular deviation techniques in nowadays. One can easily experience this craft, which is over a thousand years old, from a street designer in Yunnan, China, Hong Kong, or Taiwan, as one of the most wide supplies. Easy based deviation that refers to techniques involving the, involving the generating of a hexagram, of hexagrams, 
Six run prediction has got a advance from both the supply side and the demand side. This is perhaps because it's relatively easy to understand the literary mechanism and its acceptability. Six run prediction is the simplest craft compared to the other two techniques, which I will explain later. Six run prediction uses three coins to generate a hexagon. These upper coins run in shape with a square hole in the center, their characters on one side and the pattern on the other side. This unique coin design was officially recognized currency from 2021 BCE up to the area of the People's Republic of China. In modern times, the Asian tradition of using this, using this coin has been maintained by dividers who continue to employ them for Sixland prediction. Some dividers use authentic coins from the Qing dynasty or even earlier, where others use, use fake one for divination. First, I'm going to show, and then I'm going to show a step step tutorial for how to conduct the Sixland divination. So, first, Hold in your hand a question, and uh, which is truly worth to what's two questions. With three round shaped coins in your hands, close your eyes and think about the question carefully. Afterwards, open your eyes, shake the coins, shake the three coins, and cast them six times. Record each casting result, noting them in sequence from the bottom, that is very important. Noting, noting them in a sequence from the bottom to the top. Most importantly, drawing down the exact time of the divination using the formats of year, month, day, and hour. So the side with character is considered as, as the front, and with the side with the pattern is considered as a, at the back. Two hats represent the yang, two, two back represent yi, three hats are recorded as yi marked with an axe, and the three back. Are recorded as young, marked it with a point. After shaking and casting the three coins six times, one can generate the hexagram based on the, whole, the before mentioned rules. And in Chinese digital system, it is a pattern routine to meticulously record information about the division, such as the questions asked, the results obtained, methods for interpret interpreting the literary patterns, and so forth. So these traditions dates back to the Shang Dynasty and has continued for the subsequent 2,000 years. The divinity report, Yi Jing, serves as a repository for Chinese divination systems. Scholars from various schools and periods of time have provided commentary on Yi Jing. They have left an extensive body of work aimed at deciphering and interpreting hexagrams with this unique divinatory system. And in what follows, I will, I will highlight those judgments that are still apply in real life scenarios. Through understanding these interpretations, we might gain some insight into the mechanism of the system predictions. And uh, I listed the most, uh, the most frequent use judgments in here, which is called Guan Si in here. And uh, actually, in the real practice, all the judgments need to be simultaneously taken into consideration. And in the real practice, there are far more judgments and completed in much of them than what I just believe in here. But uh, today, I'm going to really explain the first one, reading the hexagram's names and line statements. And uh, each six line throw of coins corresponded to one hexagram. Hexagram has six lines. And then the first step is to read the reference of the hexagram. The reference refers to the information about each hexagram called the EBT. Each hexagram has a name and each line has a statement. These line statements and hexagram names with, with, with their often cryptic utterance leave ample room for interpretation. The art of division is to interpret the syntax for different individuals facing different situations, both in ancient time and the modern world. So in the hexagram, the symbols, acts, and points indicate a change. A new hexagram will be generated based on the rules that lines marked with acts or points will change to their counterpart. 
For example, Yunnan market with some up points were transferred into Yangon. Now, I will give the example of these points. Yeah. I'm so sorry, there is like uh, actually the, the, the first, uh, we have suffered the sick one in the vertical level. The, the first three lines should be connected closer together. So, so I'm going to talk about uh, the examples which are listed here. So now there are two sets of hexagrams you can see from the, from the picture. And the initial hexagram is called the primary hexagram. And the outer one called the, pri the primary hexagrams, the Chinese name is like the Hua, and the outer one is known as the Qi program, Qi hexagram, Bian Hua. And the, in this case, the left one is called the Hua, the, the right one is called Bian Hua. And the Qi hexagram is significant because it represents the changing size of reality. This change can be read, can read actually, can be understood by deciphering the hexagram's name. So, for example, the primary hexagram is Zhongfu slash Gongze Zhongfu, which is the left hexagram in this picture. And the chief hexagram is the right one, called Da Guo slash the Feng Da Guo. So, the Gongze Zhongfu describes the scenario that the gentle grace carries the water's surface, causing delicate ripples to form Da Guo slash the Feng Da Guo. Would be understood as a strong wind, and the flood waters submerge the trees. Within the context of real situation, the name of the hexagram metaphorically illustrates the scale of the change. And I will end my explanation of this prediction here. One might notice that all of this information is closely tied to eating. This body of knowledge, deeply connected with the eating and other possible words. Is what defined by this research by standardized knowledge, also called the national knowledge, national studies, Guoxue, by CCP income in mainland China. Before, before 2019, one can easily purchase these books detailing this knowledge from online platforms like Taobao, the domestic version of Amazon, or found them in physical shops. Additionally, introduction videos are available on YouTube. A domestic version of YouTube since 20, 2022, because of new sanctions related to the nation, it, ha it has become difficult to ban military related works online. So, in the subsequent transmission, the, the trajectory of teaching will gradually be detached from the moving to more sophisticated judgments. These judgments come from various scholars' commentaries on E.T. over the past 2,000 years. Some judgments are closely linked to E.T., while others incorporate other dimitri elements. Knowledge that has been detached from E.T. or other historical classic works, which has not, which have not been officially recognized by the Communist Party and have not been comprehensively reviewed in books and videos for the public. Is strongly defined as secret knowledge in this project. And the following techniques are too easy to derive deletion. This means that deletion techniques combine, combine hexagrams and concepts from easy with other deletion elements. In the community, this stage of translation signifies that learning is gradually shifting to secret knowledge. And it also indicates that members have already built strong ties with each other. During the learning of season relations, newcomers have gradually built a strong relationship of mutual trust with their classmates and with teachers before they can learn the following two division techniques. The process of building mutual trust in a group is, is determined by two interrelated dimensions namely mutual engagement and linking privacy. Mutual engagement means that members engage in offline social activities and build more personal relationships on this basis. In this stimulatory community, each class consists of eight members with no actual division techniques taught in the first five sessions. After each class, dinner is eaten together. These dinners last at least two to three hours, and members are usually required to attend. 
eating and drinking one together is one of the most effective ways to, to socialize and to minimize, minimize the, the social distance between people in contact with China. And uh, members and teachers become closer after, after attending class and meeting at least the three times. It is worth to mention that during the process of guiding closer, mutual selection also takes place because not only the members can leave the community at any time, but also teachers leave those members who he cannot trust or who, can, who, who do not integrate well with others. The privacy is a process of reveal, revealing personal information through divination techniques that are shared only within the class. At the same time, members have the obligation to maintain each other's privacy Supported by solid personal relations established during mutual engagements, the division techniques are gradually reviewed by the master to, to the members. During the private exchange, the mutual trust between the members is strengthened. Due to the dynamic learning of the practical application of division, members are encouraged to ask the questions in which they would like to receive more information which generated from the division system. To further develop the solid group connections, mutual engagements and meeting privacy are closely connected, like an interlocking series that appears. The, and then in the following, I'm going to talk about two easy derived divisions, which is called Zimengunzia, Chinese astrology, and Sichu, Chinese horoscope. I may not have enough time to delve into the two other two techniques too deeply, but I will briefly cover the history and basic mechanisms. Sichu is a form of Chinese horoscope that uses one's precise birth information, year, month, day, and hour to create an individual destiny chart. This chart manifests through four periods representing the year, month, day, and hour in the corresponding order. Each period is, is com compromised by a pair of signs one from heavenly steps and the other from earthly branches. So I show an example here, and it is Winston Churchill's Sichu. So, yeah, and uh, 10 heavenly steps here with the earthly branches create a 69 called the sexy January circle, Liu Shi Hua Yatsu. The earliest record of the full side of heavenly steps and earthly branches can be found on an oracle or an earth in Shanghai State. And then I'm going to briefly introduce how the how the second generation circle works, how the new Shuaiyas works. So we can imagine the ancient Chinese imagine the time as simple. And uh, the first character from the ten public sense is called Jia, and the first character from the twelve earthly branches is called Zi. So then is the first pair is called Jia Zi, and correspondingly the second one here to the second second one. It's called Yin Chou, Bing Ying, Bing Ma, Wu Zhen Zi, Zi Gong Wu Xin Wei. So in general, in the Liu Shi Hua Jia Zi, we have the six, six groups or six teams like that. So it's called Jia Zi, Jia Xu, Jia Sheng, Jia Wu, Jia Shen, Jia Yu. So basically, you can imagine this kind of six, we are six teams and six, six groups. And together, generated by the concept of Tang Ma Zi and uh, obviously, this is one of the traditional towers of the game. And uh, each sign is associated with one element from the five elements, and either in or yang. The overall aim for qualifying each sign with one element to, is to examine one's favorable and unfavorable elements. Information of the individual's life experiences and tendency is generated through the dynamic interaction of violence and imbalance between favorable and unfavorable elements within the mirrors. The five elements are the building blocks of the Chinese horoscope. The balance and imbalance between these elements serves as the primary references, points, and criteria for predicting individuals' life experience and tendency. 
Teaching the finance and finance of these elements involves exercising the dominance of one element or elements or will be others. Determine the state of each element is a first step. And the state of the five elements, metal, fire, fire, wood, water, and earth, are intertwined with a calendaric system. Characterized by 24, 50 day solar periods, partial seasons heat. The potential of each element is influenced by seasons. And then I'm going to talk about the last division technique, which is called consuming in the peculiar days, gates. And uh, this is the easy derived division techniques. This division techniques was officially recognized by the Chinese. Uh, a strong legal bureau in Song Dynasty, and this is how the sophisticated military system appeared in the examination and was used for selecting strongly students for the astronomical department. Those students who could show their profound knowledge about Sinatunza in good literary styles were chosen as candidates and would be trained to integrate pro prognostication for meteorologic forecasting. Xinjiangxia is by support, which is divided into three plus three sectors. The components of this system are diversified. The eight trigrams from Yiji, and they choose the four seven trigrams, which is called Hou Dian Ba Hua and the Luo Shu Man Verse, and uh, the eight entries. Nine stars from Beidou. Earth branches. All of those factors are based on a formula related to 24 15 solar periods, partial CDC. These components are arranged accordingly into each factor. And also, there are, there are other more rotating elements in the system. The dynamic of change and stagnation are the key to understand the arrangement of the boards in Xinjiangxia. But Xinjiangxia is quite a non simple board. Its rotating components change every two hours. Amazing this rotating board lies a hidden static board. This unseen board remains constant, with its components never changing. The concept of change from easing can provide context for understanding the arrangement of both visible rotating board and the invisible set static board. And then I'm going to show the one board from the Simon Denta, generated from the current times. And special thanks to Vanzen. And thank you for your time.